Mr. Speaker, thank you for the opportunity to contribute to the debate on the outcomes for the 2023 budget with the theme implementing the vision that the Treasurer, the Honourable Ling Staki MP, presented to this Honourable House on Tuesday, 29th November, 2022. I commend the Treasurer for a budget that promotes the aspirations <coughs> and plans of the Marape Rozo government. Mr. Speaker, I wish to also congratulate the Prime Minister and the government for handing down a money plan, the budget, with record expenditure of 24.6 billion kina. This is a split of 14.8 billion in operational expense <coughs> and 19.8 billion in capital investments. Total revenue and grants, also a record, is forecast at 19.6 billion kina. The 2023 budget results in a budget deficit of 4.9 billion, which slash, slashes the 2022 budget. Honorable Civil Aviation Minister, me stop you, pass them, interrupt me, lick, lick, the Honorable Trusar Ximsia. Honorable Minister, continue your. Thank you, Speaker. The total revenue and grants, also a record is forecast at 19.6 billion. The 2023 budget results in a budget deficit of 4.9 billion, which slashes the 2022 budget deficit by a billion kina and represents 4.4% of the GDP. As indicated by the Treasurer, the government aims to attain a balanced budget in its current term in office. A major achievement given the global shocks created by the COVID-19 pandemic since 2019 and the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Mr. Speaker, for the first time, we will truly align our medium-term development plan to coincide with the life of the parliament. This enables the government, and, and indeed any future government, to better plan and align development priorities with promises made during the elections. This is a real first. It provides the Marape Rozo government the opportunity to ensure that these policies, that its policies are successfully delivered and that they <clears throat> contribute to an improved performance of the PNG's economy. This is a disciplined government. We all must acknowledge and appreciate. Mr. Speaker, 2023 budget is the first annual budget for the new Marape Rosso led coalition government and the 11th parliament since independence. This budget is the fourth in the government's rolling five-year strategy of budget consolidation and economic recovery under the theme, Take Back PNG. With most development aspirations aligned to the Marape Manifesto and the Lolowata commitment. As noted in the Treasurer's budget speech, the 2023 budget is set amidst unprecedented uncertainties here and globally, brought about by tough economic conditions. Besides the COVID-19 pandemic, which reduced the government's capacity to finance the 2023 budget solely from the internal revenue, the world economy has also seen impact by the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the consequence fueling of inflation through higher commodity prices 
and disruptions of supply channels. Debt financing has become a critical planning tool, not just for the PNG government, but for everybody in this world. It is extremely pleasing, therefore, Mr. Speaker, that the Treasurer can confidently forecast that the PNG economy <clears throat> will exceed 113 billion in 2023. Indeed, a landmark in our development history. Underpinning this growth, underpinning this growth is the expectation that the non-resource sector on which the vast majority of people rely on will grow by an exceptional rate of 4.6% on top of the 4.5% last year. Mr. Speaker, while the economy is faced with a variety of external challenges, the government has taken caution approach in managing available funds resources through the budgetary process and by taking the world, the whole of the government approach in, alloc in allocation of financial resources. This is done to prevent wastage of financial resources and to maximize the return on government investments. This is evident from a lower budget deficit and the government goal of attaining a balanced budget by 2027. If you haven't noticed yet, this government has been disciplined, uh, this government has been a disciplined government. This must be appreciated by all, including our most criticized groups and individuals. Mr. Speaker, as Minister for Transport and Civil Aviation, I also wish to emphasize the importance of the transport sector as an enabler and conduit for economic development and for effective services, service delivery. <coughs> as a result of this recognition, the transport sector absorbs a significant portion of a capital funding made available each year. Nevertheless, we cannot afford to slacken our development efforts at any time. The nation's transport infrastructure and services are a vital component for economic growth, service delivery, and ensuring that the benefits of development flow can flow to all corners of this nation. The Department of Transport develops, uh, develops the transport model policy and provides the regulatory oversight role over the three vital modes of transport, land, sea, and air, that support almost every aspect of economic and social activity. Mr. Speaker, I would like to point out that the Department of Transport allocation in the 2023 budget amounts to 33.3 million. This comprises 17.3 million for operational expenses, expenditure and 16, point, 16 million for capital investment. An overall reduction of 4.9, uh, 4. Point, excuse me, reduction of 9.4 million or 21 percent compare with 42.6 in 2022. The National Shipping Services Program, NSSP, and the Jetty, Jetty's Program that are currently running within the Department of Transport received some funding in 2021. However, there was zero, there was zero down in 2022 and again in 2023, although the agency sought continuity in funding through the 2023 budget. Furthermore, it is noted that the funding of 20 million for the SSP will now reside under the Department of National Planning and Monitoring, which now means that we have parallel programs run by two different agencies, which the government may want to consider rationalizing to ensure effective outcome. Mr. Speaker, the transport sector allocation 
of 2.3 billion in the 2023 budget represents an increase of 57.3 percent or 824.8 million. This exciting increase in funding compares to the 1.4 billion in 2022 budget will set the pace for significant improvements in the nation's transport infrastructure. Out of the 2.2 billion total appropriation to the transport sector, 204 million is under the operational budget, which 2 billion targeted for capital expenditure, equating to 21% of the government's total capital investment budget. Despite indicated challenges mentioned above, this massive increment in transport sector funding in 2023 is linked to the government's overarching policy under the banner of Connect PNG Agenda. It will maintain a key focus on providing connectivity for the rural communities, helping them to better connect with local and overseas market and to better access education, health, and other services. <clears throat> the Connect PNG agenda will, will involve the construction and maintenance of key rural roads and wharves, along with provisions of electricity and telecommunications. This will help to lock in high-profile programs and projects that deliver improved living standards to most of our people. This integrated program involves planned expenditure of 450 million in the coming year. An exciting, innovative effort by the Marape Rozo government. Mr. Speaker, the jetties and the NSSP projects are integral to the government's overarching Connect PNG agenda to realize effective connectivity in transport. It would therefore be prudent for the projects and the benefits the rural majority, such as our rural airstrips and jetties, to enjoy continuity in funding. There is, therefore, a need for us to visualize a properly in integrated transport system that has the capacity to reduce po poverty and increase the the rich of government services, as mentioned earlier. I would urge the Treasurer to reconsider the Department's request for a modest funding of $10 million for jetties and national shipping services to help further boost regional and rural connectivity. Mr. Speaker, closer collaboration and partnership with the state line agency, including provincial and district administrations, with support from development partners are key enablers for the successful delivery of these new initiatives. The government continues to be the major provider of investment in the transport sector in partnership with the development partners through loans and grant funding. The land transport subsector continues to dominate the investment pot, uh, profile. However, in recent times, the aviation subsector has also received substantive funding in respect of the ongoing works undertaken by the NAC, National Airport Corporation, in upgrading national airports under the CADEP-1 project. It is now envisaged that the CADEP-2 program will extend to the rehabilitation of our small rural airstrips by the rural airstrips agency. Mr. Speaker, to conclude, 100% perfection is tabula heaven. Here on earth, we will try our best, based on current economic circumstances, to deliver this budget. Budget 2023 is this government's best effort, and the key takeaway is this government's discipline in controlling a debt economy since May 2019. This cannot be denied. 
and we all must acknowledge and appreciate. As Minister for Transport and Civil Aviation, I would like to commend the stewardship of our proactive and focus-driven driven Prime Minister, Honourable James Marape, and our hard-working and brilliant Treasurer, Honourable Ling Stuckey, and our tireless Minister for Finance and Planning for handing down this historical budget of 24.5 billion kina. At this juncture, Mr. Speaker, I would like to wish everyone a safe and enjoyable act Christmas and a prosperous 2023. I hereby commend the 2023 budget to, his, to this honourable house. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.